The most basic aim with this project is to interpret what I believe to be a masterpiece of 21st century music in a completely non-conventional musical space. And by commissioning this extraordinary visual work from 59 Productions, we've got a synthesis of all of these different art forms that will create one extraordinary experience. I'm Hugh Humphreys and I'm Head of Music at the Barbican. At the Barbican this weekend we have this extraordinary project called Open Fest and it involves all sorts of different spaces across the centre and quite remarkably in the Beach Street Tunnel. I'm Richard Slaney, I'm the Managing Director for 59 Productions and the Project Director for Array. So we've taken this space at the Barbican, the Beach Street Tunnel, which is a pretty unloved, dirty road tunnel, and we're going to transform it uh, through light, through sound, uh, through projection. I'm Nick Corrigan, and I'm the lead designer on the Array project. I don't know, the tunnel is, it's the warm-up, in a way, to like whatever exciting event I'm going to at the Barbican. And everyone's talking about the dingy tunnel, and like I read articles about the dingy tunnel, and I'm like, I love the, I love the tunnel, and I'm getting to do a show in the tunnel, and this is amazing. Music is a central part of uh, Array. What we're trying to do is put the audience inside a piece of music, and we've selected a piece by Esa Pekka Salonen called Caravane, and it's a huge scale orchestra and choral piece, which presents us with lots of different possibilities. One of the challenges about Caravane is there isn't uh, an existing recording, um, but we were really lucky that the piece had been programmed this season as part of the Barbican's focus on Esa Pekka's music. So there was a concert uh, which we recorded uh, in December, which has basically formed the, the basis of the animation that we made. When we talked to Esa Pekka about the piece, he felt that it was about these this constant journey and the idea of like a traveling circus almost and when we came to address that in our animation we decided to have a constant flow and a constant feeling of movement but it's all very abstract There's nothing figurative in it particularly there's just a feeling of traveling Technically, it's a huge challenge for us. Uh, it's 40 projectors, 40 speakers, and they're arrayed all the way along 130 metres of tunnel. And it's normally a busy road, so we're closing the road for a couple of days, and we're working in a pretty challenging environment. We, uh, over the last couple of days, have been building the structures at either end of the tunnel to close it off, make it into a black box performance space. Just behind us, uh, we're finishing off this structure, which also has an extra special element going into it, uh, which is a big mirror, and it, it gives the effect of the tunnel being twice the length. A lot of our work at 59, we projected on buildings, we project on stages, and the audience is always removed from that somehow. They're, they're in a sort of audience position, and the stage is over here. But in this one, you're really up close, so the projection is along the walls, along the ceiling, and down the other side. So you're kind of standing inside this tunnel of projection. But the genius of what 59 Productions have envisaged is actually it's, it's a work of art that can be enjoyed from any point of the tunnel. And it also allows people to move through the work of art as well. It gives people loads of different options. If they're in the middle of the tunnel, it's a totally different experience to if they're at one of the ends or the others. And that means that when we're trying to hit beats of the music where we have to make decisions about whether it's a global change or whether we're going to have some movement down the tunnel and it's really hard to just do that in 2D so we've had to take this project and look at lots of it in virtual reality. This is the first time we've really got into using VR as a sort of pre-visualisation tool um, and it's been a huge learning curve in the sense that what you think will look great um, sometimes doesn't, and what you think might be overbearing sometimes isn't, and so you have to really sort of change your perceptions of what this thing will be. Uh, creating animation in this space is really challenging because of the size of it. Um, the canvas is the biggest we've ever had to deal with. It's huge, um, and that has real challenges to workflow. We've gone past 
what computers can do and what software packages can do. Different processes that would be a quick thing that you just do have become a multi-day process. It's an overload of everything. So many different shapes, so many different colours, so, so much movement. The way that these two different art forms, and one much sort of newer than the other, are combining, it really gives you a feeling that this is a very important piece and actually something that people are going to consider more and more into the future. I'm a big believer in the accessibility of this kind of music, and so to bring it outside a concert hall, put it into a big public space, make it free is something I'm really passionate about. When I started making video art, it was to do exactly this. To take a piece of music and respond to it in a completely immersive environment and take people on a journey for half an hour is just an incredible thing to be able to do. And in such a scale, it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs>